<laughs> we just turned this wall into this barn door. Hole in everything. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're putting a hole in the wall and then a door in that hole. It's actually a barn door over that hole. I am trying to connect our front office spaces to our back office spaces. Right now, they're separated by the warehouse. You literally have to walk through the warehouse. So I want to put a doorway here. This is gonna lead into what's gonna be our little kitchenette room. And then we'll be able to bring these back office to the front offices. However, if this is a commercial building and we've not done any kind of construction like this before, so we've not had- Well, I've never made a doorway before. <laughs> and I've definitely never made a doorway in a commercial space. Right, I was just gonna say, we've never tried to use metal studs or work with metal studs. I know mm. this is not a load bearing wall, so, you know, I feel like this is a good a good starter project to see what we can do because Nothing I don't fall. really think you could mess it up too much. Yeah, I don't think anything will fall down, so. So we're gonna take you along our little journey this week as we put this doorway in and show you how it's done. Give you our lessons learned. <laughs> Step one. It's time for demolition. Well, we're really just gonna try to figure out where we want this door, try to find where it's coming out on the other side. Then we're gonna put a hole in the wall with my hammer so we can see where the wires are before we cut it out using the drywall saw. So for the barn door, we need a 32 inch opening by 83 inches tall is the max opening we can have for our barn door. So that's what we're gonna put here. The max, we're going max? Going max. Do you wanna go on the other side? How do you want to do this? I want you to go on the other side and kind of let's match up from the other door and then come through. Poke a hole through? Uh-huh, poke a hole all the way through okay. so we know where we are. Go to the other side, a couple of taps with the hammer and poof, there's the saw. This is the start of our door opening. Now we kind of quick do a quick measure, take a little peek back there to make sure there are no electrical wires. That's just phone wire, so we're good to go. We snap the full chalk line for our opening. Garrett gets the sawzall out, starts taking down the drywall. We go to the other side and we do the same. I use the tin snips to cut out the braces. Poof, there's our opening. Take out the rest of that metal stud. All right, we ran into a snag. There's power running through the wall. I had no idea. I didn't think there would be power right here. We did think that they would drop it from the ceiling. Yeah, but I thought they would be dropped through the ceiling. I guess but the walls were built before the ceiling was put in. I did not cut through it. <laughs> we're just gonna reroute it though. We got the same type of wire that's already running through the wall and some junction boxes. And we're just gonna run it up through the drop ceiling, back down and keep it going. And to make sure that we're not mess with any hot wires. We got this cool little tool that'll tell me if they're, there's actually power running through them. This thing, this thing's a lifesaver. I love it. All right, we're gonna go cut the power. Running the wires through the ceiling was pretty easy. I just went up and over and dropped them down the kim. Then I stripped the old wires. I left about three quarters of the inch bare. I did the same to the new wires. Then I fed them both through the junction box. I twisted the whites together. I twisted the blacks together. I twisted the bears together. Then I put the cap on and screwed it to a stud. I did both, one on each side. Step two. Now we're gonna frame it out. We have these two by fours. We're gonna stick the full eight feet up and into the wall. We're gonna pin the bottom with a two and a half inch deck screw. Make sure they're plumb and make sure they're 32 inches apart. Then cut the 32 inch header with the pocket saw and uh, tack that into place with some pocket holes. All right, let's, let's get this up in there. All right, should we cut the 32 inch header first so we can make sure the bottom is also 32 inches? I think that's a good idea. That's a good idea. We're gonna cut the bottom. Yeah. We're gonna cut the header at 32 inches first so we could use it as a guide for the bottom too.
Perfect. All right, it's all plumbed up. I'm gonna hit it with a couple of drywall screws to keep it in place so that we could put the uh, drywall in the gaps. Just a, a few. All right, now that the two by fours are in, we're gonna clean up the drywall, make sure it's even and level with the two by fours. So it'll uh, have Flush. a little cleaner edge when we're trying to add the drywall back. I'm just gonna score the backside. And we should be able to break it off, right? No? Yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna put the drywall back. We're gonna cut a couple of pieces that are four and a half inches wide. Kim's over there. I'm, I'm already on the floor. I didn't know he was filming. <laughs> and we're gonna fill in some of this drywall up top where we took out too much. I'm gonna use a chalk line to snap a line, and then I'm gonna score it with the knife, and we'll we'll break it. Okay. Now we're gonna attach the drywall we just trimmed out with some drywall screws. Time to add the corner round. I'm gonna put it in place and trim it with these tin snips. And then I'm gonna add a little co joint compound on the seams to use it like glue. It's gonna attach the corner bead on there. Gary's gonna add a couple of screws and then we're gonna feather it out with joint compound. All right, we let it sit overnight. It's looking okay, a little cracky, but that's all right. We're gonna sand it and then hit it with another coat of that drywall compound. We got a mask up though, it's gonna get dusty. <laughs> Step four, now we paint. <laughs> we went to Lowe's and we picked up some paint using the color match system. We took a piece of the wall and now we're just gonna paint around the doorway, trying to make it match. So we are no pro drywallers. I do recognize that as a skill. We have worked and worked and worked on this wall trying to get it flat. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close at it's this point. It's pretty good. I, I would say it's professional. Granted, we did inherit the walls that are around us, and they look, of, they look rough, so I feel like, yeah. It'll I, fit right in. Yeah, I feel like it's gonna fit, fit right in. in. That we're was my, it, that was my goal, it. to make it blend in. <laughs> didn't want it to stand out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't want this to look new or anything. <laughs> Five. Time to install the door. This is the moment everybody's been waiting for. This is the whole point of the project. All of this was simply to get this door installed. Now, I told Garrett a moment ago, this is where most marriages break down. This installation of this track and hanging this heavy door, but not ours, But babe. not us. We got this. We've actually, <laughs> we've actually bonded even closer, I feel like. It's actually brought us together. <laughs> it's brought us together. <laughs> This is supposed right. to be a quick hang door. Big bold letters right on the front says quick hang. <laughs> so, so far it's been a long hang. We're hoping this uh, next part goes quickly. We're gonna start by putting all of the hardware on the door. We're gonna put the handle, the bent straps, and anything else that goes on the door. Stop, little stop, stoppers at the top. Stoppers, all that stuff is going on first. Let's start there. Okay, 
Hardware's on. Now we're gonna measure where the track will go. We need to measure the center line of the track, which is an inch and a half from the edge of the door. And then we need to go up an inch and three quarters from the height of the door. So for us, it's 85 and three quarters. You got the level? Nope. I don't even know where the level is. I don't even know where the level is. Since we don't have a four foot level, I put this screw in the middle and then we'll level the whole thing and draw the, draw the holes. So for our installation, you have to anchor the center point to a stud, which we've done, but the others can be wall anchored in for drywall. We don't hit any other studs given the position of our door. Holes on the bar will not hit any studs, so we're gonna use wall anchors. So we've measured the holes, and now let's hope these hold. This is a very heavy door, and I'm, and I'm a little... You gotta have faith. Yeah, I, I question whether these drywall anchors will hold, but right. we will see. Nobody will be swinging from the door. It'll be fine. <laughs> All these little wall anchors come with the kit. So I'm just gonna insert these in and slide the collar up against it. Now we're just gonna hang the bar. We're gonna use the bolts that it came with. And we're gonna use these little spacers to set it off the wall. Oh yeah, these little tiny guys. Hang on, use yours. This really is quick and easy. <laughs> it's quick hang, quick hang. It has been pretty quick. All right, moment of truth. Now we're gonna hang the door. I'm on. I'm on. All right. Is it rubbing on those stops? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. See, now it's hanging straight. Huh. How are these jump blocks supposed to go on? They go up underneath to keep it from, kind of keep it sliding. There's not enough room. Oh. Putting the end stops on. Right here, like uh -huh. this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How far? until it contacts the bent strap. Basically, it stops it. Right there? Yes. And last step, door is up and it closes Go ahead, close it smoothly. Smooth like butter. Last step is installing this door guide at the bottom to make sure it doesn't wobble in and wow. out. So nobody throws it off. There's two options to this. There's a wall mount and a floor mount, but because we have concrete floors, we're gonna attach ours and we're gonna use the wall mount to the wall. Not too bad, huh? The door itself was very easy. It was a quick hang. I'll give them that, it was pretty easy. Making the hole for the door to go over <laughs> took a little more than I anticipated. I, I don't like to do electric, not an electrician. If you followed my advice during the uh, video, not an electrician, scared of electricity. I hate it, but it was pretty easy. Even that part was pretty easy. 
and it's exactly what I wanted. This is perfect. I think this is a great aesthetic for the office. And I think... And you've always wanted a barn door. So I know, I do. I have always, door. well, I have great plans for a double set oh. right over there. The hole is already there though. So yeah. <laughs> all we have to do is hang the barn that doors. That should be a lot easier. <laughs> But I'm really excited. And I, uh, after the installation, I do think this is going to work. It does seem pretty sturdy. We'll see over time. It's not bad. It's advertised to work right into the drywall with the one stud mount. So let's, we've done just what it said to do. It's not very wiggly. It's not wiggly at all, actually. All right, looks like we're about out of time. So if you're not gonna join us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, make it again. Step four. Now we paint. I paint the rollers already. I'm painting. <laughs> there you go. Does it? Oh, Don't barely. touch anything with it. All right, ready? Ready. Step four. <laughs> Jeez. That had paint on it. Step four. <laughs> I'm gonna judge the ceiling. <laughs> You're All doing right. great. Step four. <laughs> Step four. <laughs> Step four. Step four. That one sucked. Step four. No. Step four. <laughs>